Hello and welcome to the episode of Motoring Middle East. Today I'm checking out the Nissan Sunny, one of the region's favorite small cars and it's all new for 2020. So what can you expect? Well, a whole heap of style, uh, pretty much all the gadgets and gizmos that you can ask for and as always a nice fuel sipping engine, a 1.6 litre four cylinder engine, good for about 120 horsepower, matched as always to a CVT gearbox and driving the front wheels. Prices are pretty keen, 57,900 thousand dirhams for the starting edition and this fully loaded version is only 67,900 dirhams. So what do you get for your money? Well, let's find out. So what do we think of the design of the Nissan Sunny? Well, I first saw it at the Dubai Motor Show last year and I have to say, smart looking car. They moved a lot on from the blobby styling of the old car. This is quite crisp and clean and quite sharp looking. It looks like a much more expensive car than it is, like a sort of mini Altima. You've got the traditional Nissan V motion grille down here with a little bit of honeycomb effect happening. You've got pretty much the world's, actually it's quite aggressive looking from down here, isn't it? This is quite a good angle for the Sunny. It makes it look really mean and vicious, which it isn't because it's a Nissan Sunny. So going around, nice alloy wheels. What are these? 16s, 205, 55, 16s. These are also sitting, I don't know if you can see this, on continental tires. These are very nice, very expensive German tires. They will never ever be on these tires ever again. I can almost guarantee you the next person who puts it will have the cheapest Chinese tires humanly possible, which is a shame because these are quite quiet and comfortable and pretty much standard sizes. Again, lack of particular style, styling accents on the side. You do have the character line that starts down here from the front and runs all the way to the back tail light. Pretty much standard. And of course, Nissan's Hawk, rear Hawk style tail lights down here. You've also got this very unusual sort of black line that runs through from the rear window from the base of the C-pillar and kind of skirts around the glass house to the front. If it sounds like I'm struggling here, it's because that's all I have ready to talk about. It's a car. It's the kind of car that you'll see in rental fleets across the world in airport parking lots. And it does what it says in the hood. You've got parking sensors. You've got a rear camera. Actually, you have 360 camera, but don't let me spoil the surprise. And when you open the rear door, you've got a pretty big boot. Pretty big boot, he's out, he says, pretty big boot, yeah. I would say reasonable, that's my bag, you see it in loads of other cars. It can probably take a fair bit of luggage for at least two people. And does it have a spare? Hold on, it does have a spare. These are the things that matter to people that buy Sunnies. And if you know who you are, then this is definitely the car for you. Let's see what it's like in the back, shall we? So what's it like in the back of the Sunny? Well, the word Spartan comes to mind. Sparse is another word. Uh, what have we got here? Very, very little, but let's talk about the good points first. Good visibility, backrest angle is good. Under seat support for the thighs, good. No issues there. Even plenty of room in front of my legs. However, that's about where the positives end. Uh, this is sold as a five-seater, but I would really say it's a four-seater. I wouldn't want to be the person sitting in the middle because there's almost no seat room at all. There's also incredible lack of things to do. There's no charging points for your phone. There's no USBs in the back. There's no rear seat entertainment. There's not even a pocket in front of this seat. So there's one pocket in front of the passenger seat, and there's another one in front of the driver's seat. So, yeah, you've got one storage area there. There's no center armrest that falls down. There's also, I think this is the most unfor unforgivable thing at all, because the old Sunny had it, rear seat vents. So what that means is there are little vents in the back that pass through air conditioning from the front. That was in the old Sunny, and for some reason they're gone from the new Sunny. So yeah, the rear seat's bigger and more spacious and more comfortable, but you don't have air conditioning. Or at least you don't have air conditioning that flows through from the front. I think that's really, really important, and that's a sort of mission that Nissan probably will live to regret, because yes, the AC will blow off in the front, but People in the back deserve a little love too, don't they? Let's see if things get better in the front. So what's the interior of the Sunny like? Well, you've got a ton of options and features and I'm gonna get straight through it. First of all, it looks like there's two analog dials, but actually that's analog, that's digital. I'm now gonna swap between the modes. So you've got a rev counter here, which is pretty smart. You've also got uh, all the usual settings, etc. ESP, driver assistance, display, vehicle settings, blah, 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 blah. You've also got your fuel economy, you've got uh, live fuel economy, current meter, it's actually pretty good. I would say it's about 6.57 liters per 100. Not bad for 1.6. Audio and cruise control. So basically everything that you'd want. Quite a nice, 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 nice steering wheel. You've got your cruise control down here and your volume, etc. down there. Pretty logical, easy to lay out. Nice to grip and nice to hold. Just a nice, my tight, small steering wheel. I wish that it was leather wrapped. 
Again, I know it's a lot, lot, lot of money, but these are the details that separate like Mazda from the pack because Mazda does give you a very nice leather steering wheel. And I believe the Corolla also comes with a nice leather steering wheel. You've also got a four carbon effect here on the side trim for the doors. Only automatic up and down for the driver's seat. Driver's door, everything else is pretty much manual. What else have we got? Let's go down to the middle bit. You've got one storage space for your sunglasses because there's no other storage, but yes, there is no pocket for your sunglasses. That's a bit mad, isn't it? You've got, as you already noticed, two USBs down here. I don't know how fast they are, but I imagine they're decent, classic style handbrake. Uh, two cup holders, not the biggest, and they barely hold the phone. Bit of an odd space here that's full of scratchy plastic. I should point out the plastics down here are pretty cheap and scratchy. Uh, up here, you've got what feels like leather, or at least some version of leather. Definitely not bad, and you've got four stitching as well. So it makes a very smart ambience. Uh, CVT gearbox down here, pretty much D and low for even quicker starts. Let's be honest, it isn't that quick. And you've got ignition start stop button there, but no actual start stop as in turning the engine off at its junctions. You also got, I don't know if you can really see it down here, you've got Qi charging point. So quite nice features. It keeps going. You've got climate control here. It's not dual zone, it's single zone, but it's not bad. It's also unfortunately not very good. It's pretty hot out here and the AC is struggling. I'll actually turn it down so that it can hear me, but boosh, I'm going to be turning straight up as soon as this is over. This is actually pretty handy. The main screen, quite a decent looking color screen, pretty bright, pretty easy to work with. Phone, audio, connections, blah, blah, blah. Your main menu, pretty comprehensive. And what's nice about it is, this has Apple CarPlay. A 67,900 dirham car has Apple CarPlay. How cool is that? And when you put it into reverse, best feature of all, 360 cam. Can you believe this? 360 cam in a Nissan Sunny. That's really impressive. Well, you've also got lots of other impressive features as well you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect for the price. You've got a blind spot monitoring assist. I know you can't see it right now, but it does light up and tell you in, oh, you can see it down there. You can actually see it. That is the blind spot monitoring system. So pretty well loaded. So I suppose the only thing that matters is how does it drive? Because as you can see, it's not bad looking, it's pretty spacious and it's loaded with features. So does the drive even matter? Are you already sold? Well, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Let's take it out on the road. So here I am cruising along in the Nissan Sunny. And to be honest, like a lot of you, I've got a lot of history with this car. I got my driving lessons in a Nissan Sunny and I passed my tests in a Nissan Sunny. And I also spent a lot of time taking lessons in a Corolla. I wasn't a very good driver when I started off. So most of us have a lot of fondness for Sunny. People in the Middle East grew up in the back of these cars. And they were always small, cheap, but tough little cars. And I think that ethos has continued. With this new one, I saw it at the motor show and thought, oh, this is very smart, good looking car. And it is a good looking car. And it is quite spacious on the inside. Uh, and as, as you can tell from the previous bit, it's got lots of gadgets. But is that enough? And I put to you that it isn't really enough because this car just feels a bit average, a bit meh. But as soon as you get in, there's this overwhelming plastic smell that just hits your nostrils and just never ever stops it's really quite strong and the hotter it gets the stronger it gets so it feels quite cheap inside and these seats also feel quite cheap um, seat comfort not great i've done a lot of time in this car i've done five six hundred kilometers it's not particularly comfortable the backrest position is good but the bottom is quite i would say your butt hurts let me put it nicely your butt hurts and that's not great for a car that you gotta spend time in. These cars will obviously get driven everywhere, carrying four to 500 people, you know, <laughs> and all of their stuff. And I can tell you something, it's not what I would describe as a pleasant experience. Power from the engine, you're thinking, oh, the 1.6 is not great. Actually, the 1.6 is pretty solid. It gets up to speed really nicely, the bottom and the mid-range, really decent. So, you have no problem highway speeds, no issue at all, it's got plenty of poke. The CVT is mostly okay. Every once in a while it just gets weirdly confused, but it doesn't have virtual gears or any of that nonsense, but it's fine. Most people will be happy with the CVT. Most people. Steering, terrible. The steering is so light, so light and absolutely without feel. I'm gonna come to a complete stop and you'll see what I mean. That's the idea in the Middle East that luxury starts from having lightness and absolutely no effort. Well, this is a video game. Sega Daytona had more better steering feel here. Look at that. Nothing at all. Just not good enough. It's just terrible. Handling's okay. That's because you've got great continental tires. I think once you go to the third or fourth owner's cheap Chinese tires, 
things could change. The steering does weigh up at speed a little bit. It's got good grip and the ride is good. The ride is actually really good. So of the things that matter to most people, it's got plenty of grunt. It's got a good ride. It isn't that comfortable, but you don't want to go to Saudi in one of these things, let's put it that way. And it's got lots of space and lots of gadgets. But it's just so, the word I use is depressing. Like, you look at the rivals, they're all expensive or they're cheap, like the Koreans. But the Kias and the Hyundais do the same thing. Cheap plastics, lots of gadgets, and they do it slightly cheaper. So why wouldn't you buy the Kia? It's because you want that Nissan reliability. But this AC has struggled. I'm not saying it's not reliable. I'm saying that on a hot 45 degree day, the sort of stuff it was made for, the car's been struggling in this heat. It's just not doing a great job of cooling the cabin down. So if the Kia does a better AC, it automatically wins as far as I'm concerned. They're also good looking cars. And the Toyota, when you drive the Corolla, it's just so much nicer to drive. From a handling perspective, from a ride perspective, from a seat comfort perspective, just in every way, dynamically, it's just better. I think the Nissan engine is slightly stronger, although the Toyota has two liters and hybrids, and the hybrid is actually a great motor. It probably saves you more on gas as well. This has been a pretty economical car on gas. But the difference with the Corolla is, I thought that was the kind of car that you look back with pride when you get out of it. With the sunny, you finish every journey and you're just exhausted. You're like, oh God, I need a drink of obviously water or some halal beverage. I feel like I've been a bit down on the sunny. Uh, I wanted to like it. I think there's so much to like about small cars. But I think in my philosophy, to understand where I'm coming from, small cars should have a bit of character. If you've ever driven a small French car, they're really fighty little things. They really enjoy driving. They enjoy just being like little terriers out of a leash, you know. They just, they're always biting and running around and yapping and just so much energy. They're like a chihuahua. Uh, Japanese cars don't do that, but they tend to be quite solid, reliable in their own ways. This car just feels like there's no spirit in it. There's no character. There's no soul. And for me, that for me is an unforgivable sin. It does everything that it says it should do. And a lot of Nissans now suffer from this. Not the Patrol. I drove the Patrol recently. Good car. Uh, much better. They found character, dare I say it. It's so hard to criticize this car because in some ways it does everything properly. But it does nothing well. Oh, and one more thing I'd like to point out. Uh, highway noise. So normally I don't really bother about it too much because it's explanatory. Most cars are pretty quiet these days. Not so the Nissan Sunny. Engine's very thrashy and loud, high RPMs. But again, very quick. It gets up to, I mean, get 120. Boom, done. Very, very good at doing the 120 sprint. And cruise control is very solid. But it's quite noisy. There's a bit of tire noise, but not much. I would say nothing to worry about. But a lot of wind noise. This body is not super aerodynamic. So what fatigues you over long journeys is this constant roar, this wind noise. And the reason luxury cars are so good is because they emphasize two things. Space, which this car does have, lots of space, but also quiet, isolation. Real luxury is not about being surrounded by people, it's about being isolated from everybody around you. And in that way, the Sunny is not very, not a very good isolation chamber. You're constantly having to like, when the winds pick it up and move it around, it's a bit light, feels a bit flimsy, it's just noisy, hot, uncomfortable. It's not the best highway car I've ever seen, to be honest with you. And is the Corolla better? Yes, the Corolla is better. Which is a real shame. I think Nissan had a chance for this car to really sort of hit the mark. And it's just okay. It's just okay. 